Okay, I think we are live. I'm not exactly sure. I think it seems like it. I'm just going to double check uh, my other window just to refresh the page to see if I pop up. Yep. Okay, we are live. Awesomeness. So, hello everyone and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha and today I wanted to do an educational live stream where we talk about the results of the um, necropsy from the fish that I sent in that was really sick and also the results from the lab. So what happened is I had a mystery disease in my fish room and there are a couple of videos you can check out on my channel to kind of get caught up on what was happening. For the longest time, oh, my nose is itchy. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my fish and I tried a bunch of different treatments and nothing seemed to be working. A lot of people had a lot of theories. The most common theory is everyone thought it was columinaris, but the treatments for that disease were not working. So in my desperation, I reached out to Dr. Eric Johnson, who is a fish veterinarian, and he agreed to take in my fish to unfortunately sacrifice him so we can really find out what was wrong because there was always a possibility that whatever my fish had, other fish in my fish room could have had. And it turned out that one of the fish from my previous beta spawn that I sent out also had this same problem. So as a breeder, it is very, very important when there is a disease that I do whatever I can to find out what it is, to try to prevent the spread of fish diseases, but also to let everyone know so they can, there can be a treatment. Because the worst thing you can do as a breeder is to send out fish that can possibly be sick and spread disease around, um, have your fish infect other fish, and then it can spread and it can become a very big problem very quickly. So it was very important to, to kind of try to figure this out. And let me take a moment to say hi to everyone. We have uh, Mel Girl 2, we have uh, Zo Kitty, we have Smiley Betas over here, we have Sherry. Uh, Vincent. So hello everyone. Thank you for joining me to the live stream. So I'm going to continue on with my story and I'll be popping in to the chat every now and then to kind of see what you guys are saying. So I sent in the fish and he um, humanely euthanized it and then kind of um, the necropsy he opened up the fish to see what was wrong and the first initial thing which wasn't really related to the disease is he found out that my male beta had fatty liver disease, which was something that I completely did not even expect to find out, which prompted me to do a lot of research. Luckily, I actually have the book that Dr. Johnson sent me, and I've mentioned this book before. And in this book, he actually talks about fatty liver disease, and that is something that is becoming more and more common in betta fish. When you feed your uh, domesticated fish, they need a specific amount of amino acids in their food. And it's a whole amino acid chain. So if you have all of them, and they have to have all of them in the food, then they can utilize this food and uh, use it to build tissue and use it for other good healthy functions in their body. If only one amino acid is missing, the fish can't really properly utilize this food and what happens is the fish will store it as fat and a lot of common fish foods that we see nowadays do not have all the necessary amino acids which is why i hear a lot of uh, better breeders and fish keepers to recommend feeding your fish a variety of foods and also mixing pellets what you do is when you have two or three or four different brands of pellets that are species appropriate to the specific fish that you are feeding, you are increasing the chances that all of those amino, amino acids will be present because certain companies might uh, have certain amino acids and other ones because not all of them will have this. And this will help prevent uh, fatty liver disease happen in your fish. Another reason that it can happen could be um, due to the lack of swimming space. Bettas do need to exercise like other fish. In the case of the male I had, he looked really um, fit and he was also very active. So I think he was in the earlier stages of fatty liver disease and that makes me very concerned about the other fish I have. I predominantly feed frozen food and I do try to mix the food I have 
but now I'm going to be even more careful because I tend to feed one type of pellet for the specific uh, type of day that I'm feeding. Now I'm actually going to make uh, bigger pellet mixes so I can make sure that my fish are getting the amino acids to prevent fatty liver disease. And I'm going to take a moment to also kind of pop in here and raise Aquara is on here, Artsy Animal Lover, Benu S, Monica's Aquarius Therapy. So hello everyone and thank you for joining me. I am giving you guys an update on what happened to my uh, sick fish and kind of the results that I got. Now the cool thing is Dr. Johnson didn't send me photos. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to show them in live streams. So I can't share them with you, but I did have photos that he took under the microscope when he was uh, taking a closer look at the different parts of my fish's body. So the first thing is, yeah, we found out that there we had the problem of fatty liver disease. Um, the more research I did about the topic, the more I found out that it is more common in the fish keeping hobby. And it is not really something you can see in your fish unless you, 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 know, you open up your fish after your fish dies and look at the liver. Or sometimes with certain koi, you can kind of see it if koi get fat. But if you're looking at um, feta fish, a lot of the times it will be kind of go unnoticed. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense as an explanation to why some fish mysteriously die for a lot of pet hobbyists that have vetos, especially a lot of people just feed one type of pellet. That is the common thing. And it makes a lot of sense if you have a fish, feta fish in a smaller container, you're feeding it only one type of pellet. They can't utilize that food to its fullest potential. So all they're doing is storing that fat you know, in their liver and in their body, and eventually they just get lethargic and your uh, fish can, you know, die prematurely and it can shorten their lifespan. So the second thing that happened is, and I have like, I have notes here and I have notes on my computer and I have a book over here because I did a ton of research to kind of really understand all this. Um, he was taking a look at the skin to try to find if, because uh, you know the fish was having uh, issues on the top of its face, on its skin, we couldn't figure out what it was. It was completely resistant to a variety of medications. So Dr. Johnson took a look at it, but then decided to remove that layer and he sent it off to a lab. So I think, I'm not 100% sure, I have to double check, but I think it's the same lab that Jenny from Solid Gold uh, sent her fish for testing, the one in Florida. So he, he sent the skin uh, sample over there. And then we waited a while till we got the results. So that way we can have some other people take a look at it and confirm what it is exactly. Turns out that the weird skin issue that I've been dealing with is actually called spironucleus. And it is a type of, um, I guess, parasite, uh, single cell organism. I'm still not 100% familiar with it. I've been reading up about it. Um, I'm, I'm not super, super familiar, but I'm gonna shit I just hit my hand no reason. But uh, I am going to do my best to try to explain it to the best of my ability. The first thing that I found out is that made me really happy is there's actually a very simple cure, the spironucleus, and that is using metronidazole. But the thing is, you have to feed your fish the metronidazole. So if you, uh, if, if you use any type of medication that might have some metronidazole in it, uh, and I have a lot of liquid uh, medications that I've been dosing my tanks with and I was doing dips for the fish. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help. And the reason is because spironucleus, while it can show up externally on the fish, it actually resides in, inside of the fish, especially it hangs out in the gut of the fish. And then it can kind of move to, towards other organs. So the medicine to treat this, I have uh, Metroplex, which is metronidazole for fish, this is the Seachem version, and to help attach this to food, sometimes when you have fish food and then you put medication in the water, the fish food, uh, the medication can kind of come off it, of the fish food, so you need a binder. And the binder just makes sure that the medication really sticks to the food and doesn't dissolve in the water, and this stuff is focus. So there's instructions. I'm not gonna really explain how to use this because I've been figuring it out myself so far. I've only done one treatment, I'm gonna do more. But luckily, yay, first step is we knew that there is a known, excuse me, there's a known cure for this. So yay. But 
The downside is it's a little tricky to get rid of it. And there's a possibility I might never be able to fully 100% get rid of it from my tank. Because the thing is, fire nucleus, so I said it hangs out in the inside the guts of the fish, right? And it can move to other organs internally. And as a fish gets uh, stressed out for whatever reason, if it's poor water quality, if it's stress, um, some of the other reasons were, let me check what they were. I know it was weak or stressed fish, uh, compromised immune system. Um, what ha can happen is the spiral nucleus can take over. So it is actually something that can be in any aquarium or in your tank, and it can be on your fish. And as long as it's in smaller quantities, your fish can be okay with it. Uh, cichlids tend to be more um, susceptible to spiral nucleus. It seems to be more dangerous when it comes to cichlids. From my experience, betta fish tends to deal with it pretty well because, I mean, I've had it for a long time on my male betta that had that problem. And then it turns out I have another female betta that has it as well. And they've had it for a long time. They've been dealing with it. So I guess this might be more new in the uh, betta hobby and bettas tend to deal with it pretty well. But I feel like over time, this might eventually kill your betta because what it does is spiral nucleus causes weight loss, darkening of skin, decreased activity, refusal of food, white or pale stringy feces. And eventually if your fish is really, like really, really sick, it'll start to float sideways and look bloated. So it will look like um, it has dropsy without actually having dropsy. So a lot, I know a lot of some people message me that their fish looks really bloated, um, but they don't think it's dropsy, what's wrong with the fish. It could be this possibly. Um, the thing about a spiral nucleus is it passes from fish to fish via feces. So one thing is very important to make sure you gravel back the bottom of, of your um, aquarium to try to eliminate this feces as much as possible. If fish pick at food at the bottom, if they eat a little or ingest a little bit of uh, feces from the infected fish, that's how it will spread from one fish to another. But a cool thing about it is if you have a microscope, and you know how to identify these little organisms, you can actually check your fish if it has spiral nucleus or not by looking at its poop under a microscope, which means that in the future, I will have to think about possibly getting a microscope because I mean, I would like to do skin scrapes and um, do a lot of cool stuff like that too, you know, kind of learn how to identify a lot of diseases and be able to check for things like spiral nucleus. I was kind of ranting a little bit. Let me take a second to look at the uh live chat um uh, raise a says oh my this sounds something that readers should take seriously from what i'm aware i think a lot of readers are already aware with it especially because there's a lot of different types of spiral nucleus so there is one for example that's um uh causes hole in the head disease for example so there's there's a couple different types of spiral nucleus and they, they cause different things in fish now i don't I could ask Dr. Johnson if, if he knows exactly which type of spiral nucleus I have. I think he just does, didn't want to overwhelm me. He just sent me a packet of information that's like a general overview of like what spiral nucleus is. So I can just focus on the treatment and that he told me that this is something that just might be in my tanks forever because it's kind of like a common aquarium thing that can be in tanks and it can not harm your fish. But at the same time, you can, I guess. Over time, it depends how your fish stresses out. And one of the reasons your fish can stress out is during shipping. So what happened with one of the fish that I sent out that um, also had it is she was completely fine, didn't show any signs of spiral nucleus. And then after shipping, she started having uh, the physical external signs, the same that this male had as well. So she went through the stress of, of um, shipping she had the weakened immune system and that caused her it to take over and became a really big problem. Um, let's see, let's check. Oh, I got a super chat from uh, Gone Mag. It says, fish fan, thank you very much. I appreciate the super chat. They're gonna go towards the buy medicines for my fish fund because now I, I might be getting more because I think I've treated everybody with this, with the, um, Metroplex, um, 
especially the young baby bettas, I want to make sure that even if they pop, might not have it, just in case, I want to treat them and try to knock this out early to make sure that when these guys are ready for jarring and sales, that, um, you know, I'm going to be selling healthy fish. But when it comes to the fish that were sick, they were hanging on this tank, I think these guys might be getting a treatment every month for the next few months because it might take a while to fully 100% get rid of this. I'm going to be using quite a bit of this stuff. And you know what's really weird? So you know, hey, I've been, I've been telling you guys I've been sick for a while. Um, I've been having the, as I call it, the stomach bug from hell. It was, it was really bad. Uh, usually when you have like a stomach flu, it will usually add, you know, last a couple of days or it will last to like maybe a week at most. Mine lasted almost a month to the point where I had to go to the doctor and I had to get prescribed an antibiotic. And guess what they prescribed? I got metronidazole. So I thought it was hilarious because it was the same time I had to buy the Metroplex for my fish. I was like, great, I am taking the exact same medication that my fish are taking for different reasons. Um, Cause uh, metronidazole can treat, you know, a lot of things, but it's kind of interesting that is metronidazole something humans can take, but people can take. But you can't uh, use this stuff because Metroplex also has other additives. What does it have? It's not only metronidazole, it has something else in here. Let me look at the ingredients. It has metronidazole 70%, and then it also has agathians. I don't know what that is, it's 30%. And the other thing about uh, medicine for fish is that it's not regulated by the FDA. So, you know, in case you, you think, hey, I'm sick, you know, I'll buy some cheaper, not prescribed oh, fish medicine. We've got that fish medicine. You can't do that, guys. You gotta, you gotta stay safe. You know, fish meds are separate. Human meds, you gotta work with your doctor and get the good prescribed stuff. So, um, let's see. Um, what was I talking about? Um, oh, more stuff about spironucleus that I found out. Uh, what it does is it causes, and I have it written down because I have my little notes. It causes increased mucus in the intestines and gallbladder and can spread to multiple um, organs. And that is why it starts to cause digestion problems over time if it really spreads within the fish. And that's kind of why it's immune to a lot of things. You have to feed, you have to tackle it internally because um, it'll just hang out in your fish's inside, inside, inside the gut. So if you try to treat it externally, it's not really going to do anything about it. So that's kind of the general gist. I have more information on sparring nucleus and if you guys would like in the future, I can do a more in depth video where I actually, you know, do more research, put something together and explain a bit more about spiral nucleus. My problem is I haven't really had many fish diseases in my like 10 plus years of fish keeping because I've never had a lot of fish tanks. And for the most part, I get pretty lucky. I don't get a lot of things. Um, at the moment with my new apartment, I'm lucky. The water quality seems to be pretty good here in Wheeling. So I, I'm not very well versed in um, diseases and different medications and treatments, which makes it really hard because I have a lot of people reach out for me asking me like um, to help them with their sick fish. They'll tell me the symptoms. And a lot of the times, like besides some basics, I, I can't really diagnose and treat your fish because I don't have the knowledge and the training. So I'm really trying hard. I'm, I'm really hoping to go through this book. I also, like the crazy person that I am, this is not even all of it, but this is some of the documents from the International uh, Beta Congress. I printed out, because if you join the International Beta Congress, they have a whole uh, section of resources and articles that other members have written. And a lot of them are actually about diseases and treatments. And I had my boyfriend at work print out the whole Whole thing. I have like some of it here, but I have another. Actually, can I get it out? Oh, it's right here. There it is. I have a whole fat folder. There it is, guys. I have the whole thing from the International Beta Congress. You got to print it out. And I'm slowly going through this. And I feel like this is like fish college. Like I'm taking notes. I have my little notepad. I'm reading about fish diseases. I'm studying up. I, I feel like if I'm going to be. Um, a channel that is going to help you guys with, with your better fish care. I have to learn as much as I can and try to make as many videos as I can so that I can provide as much um, 
uh, materials that you guys can use as reference to help you guys. So let's see who else is hanging out over here. We have Miss Primetime Aquatics. Oh my gosh, it's the wifey of Jason from Primetime Aquatics. And I guess she made her own little account. And she says, great way to wrap up a Wednesday making dinner tacos and watching some creative techie thing. Hi, Kasha. Hello. She's going to be at the cool event at Coachella, which, by the way, I haven't told anyone yet, but I'm going to tell you guys now, since we're hanging out in the live chat, there's going to be an event in August called Aquachella here in Chicago. And it is going to be kind of like, I guess, Coachella meets fish keeping expo. I don't know. It's new. It's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fancy. I'm going to be there. A bunch of other smaller uh, fish tubers are going to be there. I'm still going to try to reach out to other YouTubers and invite them. It should be a lot of fun. If you want to make the adventure down to Chicago to kind of hang out and see it, I would highly recommend that you do because it's going to be really fun. And my nose is really, really itchy. Huh. Super itchy. Goodness gracious. But it's going to be super awesome. I'm going to make a video um, telling you guys more about it uh, that will hopefully be a little more better because I don't know all the details. We're finding out more and more about it at the moment. But it's so far from what I've heard, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a lot of fun going to be a meetup, so we'll be able to, you know, hang out. If you guys can come out, um, I might have some fish that will finally be cleared and healthy. So I'll try to be selling some fish at the event, maybe, if you would like to actually pick out a better in person. Oh, goodness gracious. So that is kind of a thing. And let's just look up some more comments. Uh, Nancy says, hello from Arkansas. Uh, oh, gosh. Sammy... Avenish, Avenish, Sammy, I think I'm saying this right. Do you have any veil tails? I have Sonny the veil tail. He's actually swimming. He's blurry right now because the camera's not focusing on him, but he's he's swimming laps. Uh, from what I I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Ray from Ray's Aquarium might be breeding some veil tails. I hope so because we kind of need to bring we need to bring the veil tails back to the fish keeping community. I think that would be super cool, but. Personally, I'm not really interested in veil tails. I only have my one Sunny. He is magical. He's the best veil tail ever. Um, do, 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 do. Triple Jesus, I need to get tickets to the event. Um, let me look up really quick so I can give you guys a link in the in the chat to the to the event. Uh, there isn't a whole okay. There's a Facebook. There we go. Aquachella. It's spelled both ways. So some people have been calling it Aquachella. Some people have been calling it Aquachella, like fish shell. I guess the official name is Aquachella, and I'm going to link it right now, right here. So there we go. So I put the link. It's Aquachella.com. And there's going to be more information soon. There's going to be a whole uh, YouTuber list. And it's going to be cool because it's going to be like an artistic, like, vendor event and it's going to be with live music and we're going to be displaying fish and corals in like an interesting artistic way i don't know it should be a lot different than your typical like pet or fish expo and it should be a ton of fun and it's going to be in chicago and chicago is just a cool place to go if you ever you know want to go to an event i mean you know i think it's cool you can definitely visit the shit aquarium which is a cool place to check out while you're here so i highly recommend it. Ray might be attending possibly. Oh, she says I've got veil tail babies and they're just now free swimming. Oh, you're a fish grandma. How does it feel? Being a fish grandma is the best, best thing ever, in my opinion. By the way, we've got 70 people currently hanging out with us in this live stream, which is magical. And from, if I look at my video, we got 35 thumbs up and one, one thumbs down. Sad. So if you like this live stream, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it some love, and share it with your friends. Especially if you like a particular live stream or if you like a particular topic that I discuss. Uh, after the video uh, renders and goes live on my channel, I really appreciate it if you sometimes pop back in and leave a comment. Because live streams tend to have to get a lot of comments. And it's kind of cool for me to sometimes try to reply to um, any comments that I see later on, because sometimes I don't get to everything that I see in um, the 
nice beautiful chat i'm pointing this way like like you like you're right here you're in you're in this corner you're you're hanging out right right here and oh i have another question would you guys like um for me to start making creative pet keeping merch i've i've always done like some but i never really promoted it i just did like my generic creative pet keeping logo and i did it for like a shirt but i never made anything cool and i usually just have that and i walk around my little hat but i really think i want to make some merch but besides my logo i want to make some cool like beta related stuff like things you might actually like want to wear if you're you know into betas or other fish so just kind of mentioning um that also down in um the comments once the video is live if you would like for me to cover spironucleus more in depth um i i definitely will just let me know because i need to know what you guys want to see and you know i will do my best to make your wishes come true big city beta says yes make beta merch by the way, can I click and make Ray moderator? Let's see. Yes, I can. Oh, and also down the wormhole. Hi, I should make you a moderator too. You have been, both of you have been upgraded. Da -da -da. So that way, oh, and come mad. Give me another super chat. This is stickers. Oh, I do have stickers. I'm going to be giving out uh, stickers. Oh, there's a fly or a bug. Did I catch it? I did, I did not. I completely failed. But I will be giving out creative pet keeping stickers, that's for sure, at the um, Aquashella. But I would like to maybe have some t-shirts or some posters um, to sell to you guys if, if you would like. Um, and then give away like some free goodies for fun and, you know, sell some bettas. <laughs> Racist, I feel so bad about it. Yes. You guys are all fancy pantsy now. No, actually, I should scroll up and also make Miss Primetime Aquatic Moderator too. There we go. That way I can more people. Oh, uh, Adore Bree says, can you breed king bettas? That is actually something I have been really thinking about because I'm kind of fascinated by king bettas. The thing is, um, I really want to find uh, a pair or fish from a already established and good line because you can occasionally get uh, king bettas in pet, pet smart, no pet co if you're lucky. But you don't know what their origins are. And I guess you can get them, you know, import them. But when you import them, is, you know, again, you don't know what the genetics and the origins are. And because I'm already working with my little line of Petco Bettos, which I'm trying to fix, and I'm stumbling across small little issues with their genetics that I have to now work to fix and, you know, better my line, it would be nicer to just, like, start off with a uh, proven, healthier, more robustly bred line and i feel like um with, with with giant bettas there's a possibility that they might be less healthy because every time you breed a fish bigger or a lot smaller than what they originally were i guess you know evolved to be there's usually some health issues involved so i i would like to do it i just want to really put a lot of thought into it and i want to do it carefully so that if i produce fish i'm going to produce healthy fish that I can sell that you guys can enjoy for a long period of time and super thirsty. What's the temperature here? Uh, we're at 79.9 degrees. Everywhere else is cooler, but I keep this room fairly hot. I mean, the window's open, but I don't have any fans on. I have fans on in the other room. So I like to keep these guys toasty and I'm going to be jarring uh, the baby bedas really soon. And I want to keep this uh, place warm so I don't have to buy um, heat. The, um, what is it called? Flex Swap. There we go. I mean, eventually I want to buy Flex Swap, but I want to wait a little bit. So I, these guys should be fine being jarred in this room because it's toasty up in here. Ah, I'm so thirsty. By the way, so I just thought about this because I'm thinking about the plastic bottle. Um, recently, I got a gift uh, of a um, RO unit and I need to figure out how to install it because I live in an apartment, so I can't like install it to my pipes. I there's I found a way that you can screw them to the sink and then plug them through the little screw. I'm finally gonna have nice filtered water, so I can finally ditch the water bottles. That's gonna make me so happy. Like my thing is, I need to ditch water bottles. I mean, like plastic bottles and just refill like my little bottle and straws. Straws are my nemesis. Once we we get rid of that, I'm gonna be a happier turtle. So. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, 
Oh man, it's hot. It's so hot and sweaty. Goodness gracious. Um, let's check what time it is super quick. I'm not gonna have. Oh, well, it's only six thirty. I was gonna be like, oh, I'm not gonna have a super long live stream, but I've already been out here for half an hour. Um, let me look through the comments super fast. Uh, let's see. Everyone's saying merch is awesome. Yes, better merch. So yes, I wanna I wanna make some cool stuff, and I'm an artsy fartsy person, so. You know, I should be able to make some like cool art for you guys to hopefully enjoy. Maybe something funny. Oh, actually, I have a mission. Do you have any puns or funny, better related t-shirt ideas? If you do, when this video goes live, let me know in the comments because I need ideas. I want like some funny or punny better t-shirts. Like, like you know, silly things that you, you would enjoy uh, being able to, uh, bleh, I can't work. My brain is melting slowly. So that's kind of it. Um, kind of having fun hanging out with you guys. I, you know, I'm glad I was able to give you guys an update. I might do more videos about health uh, in betas. I definitely want to, at one point or another, make a video about the importance of proper quarantine disease prevention and treatment when you are a breeder, because I have the, the more I, I learned the more my eyes are being open to kind of some shady practices in the better breeding world and i'm noticing there's more and more situations where breeders will sell fish that have diseases and then when you contact them about it they're like mm, you know not my problem and and some things you know can be your fault after you receive the fish but some stuff is um the only way it's showing up on your fish is if, if the fish already had it and they had to have it from somewhere. So I think it's very important. I think we have to take it very seriously as the hobby is, is growing because the more bettas we sell, the more bettas we breed. We have to be really responsible and we can't sell sick fish. We also can't over medicate our fish too. I have unfortunately seen some betta breeders that will medicate your their fish like heavily with everything. And I know that they were like trying to prevent a lot of diseases and just like, you know, dip their fish in like a concoction of everything, like every month. That is also a problem because what happens is fish will build resistance to medications over time as well. Uh, fish can even build up resistance uh, to even salt that you use in your aquarium. They can become salt resistant. So for example, uh, velvet can build up a salt resistance so every time you use too much of something, it becomes a problem too. And I think that's that's a definitely an important topic that needs to be talked about a lot more in the hobby. There's a lot of uh, experienced breeders that know, they have a wealth of information, they have a ton of stuff, but there's a lot of new people that are getting into, into the hobby. And I feel like the information is sometimes confusing and it's hard to uh, find. And I really want to do my best to try to provide you guys and make this as easy as possible, and I think they'll help the community. And let's see, uh, Aquarius said that is doing better. Huh, that's true. Or maybe, what what else can we do with better? Like, or like, can, can we have a fish that, we have fish, can we have a shirt that says, my fish are better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shots fired, how peril. That would, that would start some, some arguments in the community like these better fish are the best but then again i kind of like other fish too i'm not i'm not all entirely team beta actually team beta could also be i should be writing these down hold on i'm gonna get the notepad write this down What if I did a t-shirt for every fish fin type, like Team Crown Tail, Team Placat? Would people care? I don't know. That one might not might be more specific. I don't know if people would care about that, but that would be kind of fun. Um, I swam out of ideas. <laughs> That's a good one. It's cute. You guys are the best at this. That's going to be like... It was supposed to be an educational live stream about diseases and instead it's me like writing down notes for merchandise somehow. But yeah, these, that's, that's what we hang out here for, magical 
magical things happen. We have magical adventures. Um, and I really appreciate it when you guys kind of talk amongst each other too and answer questions. We've got some, a lot of beta peoples, you know, like Ray and the big city bettas that are the beta peoples in the, in the house. Um, gotta get a beta. <laughs> I like that too. I kind of like that I catch them all with Pokemon. Okay, you guys are so cool. You guys are cool. And what I love about the new YouTube update is that uh, even though the, uh, the video goes live, these comments will end up being here. So I can always like scroll back through some of these. So if I miss some of these or I might not notice them now, I can look through it later. And you guys can also add them afterwards when the video goes live because I'm finished. <laughs> you're too much. Oh. That, that could be like a mortal combat, like finish him, but like thin, like fish. I don't know. That could be like a better fighting thing. Although better fighting is not really a funny thing, but I guess it could be if you're not really serious about better fighting. Like I want to make fun of better fighting, but at the same time I don't because it is a sport where, where fish do, you know, it's still a thing. Fish do die. That's, that's a tricky one. Um, but uh, Triple Z says you should do some more collabs. I want to do some collabs, and if we got some people that will probably come in to Chicago um, in August, hey, we, we could make some collabs happen. We can have some adventures in my, in my fish kingdom, fish room, magical place of adventure. That should be a lot of fun. Um, I think I might have to end this live stream soon. Yeah. Because it's already 6.37, this, this live stream has already been like roughly 37 minutes, minutes long. Um, I don't want it to be too long because I kind of worry that the people that, once this video goes live, the people that miss the live stream, if it's too long, they might not want to rewatch it. I don't know. You guys, um, if you miss a live stream, do you actually sit there through the live stream and watch it. Um, for me, it's a yes or no. There are live streams I have watched, and there are live streams that I couldn't sit through. For me, the important part is maybe that there's like a like a particular topic that a person is talking about as a whole, and if they're just randomly answering questions and talking, for me, over time, it gets a little boring. But if there's a topic discussed, which is why I was trying to focus on the, the topic of spironucleus and letting you guys know what spironucleus is to the extent that I understand it at the moment and, and let you know about uh, fatty liver um, as much as I can because I wanted this to be instead of just a random live stream I wanted it to be like you know hang out with me but also let's still learn something while we're hanging out together so maybe if you're re-watching this or maybe you're just watching this video after it went live and doing water changes or something like, it'll be something interesting to do uh, they says if it's 30 minutes or longer, I end up skipping through. Yeah, it's understandable. Uh, Laura says, yes, I'll sit through the whole live stream. Um, so yeah, it seems, seems to be, you know, kind of a mixed bag. Um, I'm going to try to improve and, and, uh, do these a little better. My fins are better than your, <laughs> better, oh, my fins are better than your. That would be funny if, to, to make a drawing of a fish looking at, a, like, another better and, like, flaring. Taking notes. But on that note, I think I will end this live stream. One last thing. Um, when this video goes live, another question. I'm asking you guys a bunch of questions, but I guess it makes sense because, I mean, I make these videos for you guys. So might as well ask you guys because, I mean, really, it's for you. So your opinion matters. Um, would you like for me to make live streams more regular? Um, I would like to do live streams if they are themed. If I make random live streams or I'm talking, I tend to, like, talking about random things, I tend to delete those because I feel like over time those don't really provide um, value to people. But if I'm actually covering a topic and then later on, like, maybe answering questions and talking to you guys, would that be something you would like for me to maybe do more regularly like maybe like a regular twice a month live stream where we talk or every week i don't know but on that note just wanted to ask you guys that let me know when this video goes live and i'm gonna actually head out because well head out. i'm not, not really i'm not going anywhere i'm still gonna be in this chair but i'm gonna end this live stream
go do fishy things. I need to keep working on the fish room. As you can see, I've been rearranging some stuff and doing some cool things. I'm really glad I got to spend some time with you, uh, you know, and your suggestions for, teach, for Mark especially are super punny. And I'll see you guys in, what's today? Today is Wednesday. So I'll see you guys in Friday's video and maybe earlier if there is a new banana show video on her new YouTube channel, Banana the Talking Dog. Who knows? Maybe. Secrets. So on that note, bye guys.